god. Okay, it just ebbs with potential. There's 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 so much here. Hey guys, welcome to Munich. We're at the Rennsport Expo, as many of you have guessed. Now, I'm on the back of a 30-hour flight, so I am completely knackered. It's the trip from Australia's Germany is insane, but as you've already seen, I've had a chance to meet up with some of the really, really cool creators, and they've put us up in some not too bad little rooms. So we're about to head up for the first presentation to learn hopefully what this Rennsport thing is all about, and uh, I'll report, and of course, there's gonna be a bunch more footage in this video later on, so stay tuned. Alright, we're here in Rennsport for the first time at the Expo here in Munich. It's literally, well, literally my third time driving the car, but I swear I've only turned about two laps. We're gonna have a very, ooh, very finicky rig. We're gonna have a, a very interesting introductory experience together where I run you guys basically through what are my introductory experiences of this title and hopefully get a feel for uh, how we're all going to feel in our first time driving this title. Now, this definitely seems like it's set up for a midget, so I do apologize if I seem a little bit uh, cramped as I'm driving. One thing I can say, I don't know if you guys can hear this, the differential sounds on this are just mint, like absolutely brilliant. Not even across the pit lines for you. You immediately feel that there's a lot of potential. And oh man, that, oh, that differential sound as you go down into T1. It just gives you all that vibe straight away. Now, I was talking to David Perel before, and he was saying that he wasn't getting all the sounds that you normally get in a GT3, like the scrapes, the underbody stuff, and like the creaking and everything, but the sound that you do get that has been modeled is amazing. You can tell that they just shoved the mic all over a BMW M4 GT3, and that, like, that's what we're getting. Unless it's an M6 that I'm driving, I apologize in advance. I've got interior views, so I can't tell. Um, these are not going to be the best laps you've ever seen, but let's talk about what the actual driving is like. You can obviously see that the game looks absolutely stellar. I mean, it's like the next level of ACC. It's basically all the things that we've wanted out of Unreal Engine 4, minus my ability to drive. So the color balance is so much nicer, it's so much less cartoonish. It's got that Unreal 5 kind of sleek finish. Everything's a little bit more muted and understated, but the detail on the track is insane. I've never seen such a 3D model of Hockenheim before. It, it, I can actually just feel and see the undulations on this very nice uh, OLED screen that we're driving on here. You can probably tell physics-wise that there's some interesting stuff going on. It's a very snappy uh, M M4, assuming it is an M4 and not an M6. I probably should have paid attention. It has some very interesting characteristics to the handling. Overall, there's a great sense of detail, lots of granularity in the, in the road surface. I'm getting so much. And one thing you're noticing there, it has a very Project Cars 2-esque uh, curb handling, especially on the, the lumpier curbs. I'm not really sure what that's about. We've all been talking about it at the Expo. It's like one of the few things that we've brought up that are, that are a little bit peculiar about the handling currently, but broadly speaking, it just ebbs with potential. There's, there's, there's so much here. It feels so phenomenally lifelike. And what we're gonna do is finalize this one more lap, then I'm gonna jump into the Porsche for you guys, and we're gonna compare essentially how it's gonna feel when we put the engine in the rear. You know, because we're getting so many snaps in the front engine car, I'm curious, is it gonna be even, oh my God. Okay, so you can see how it handles going over some pretty rough sausage curbing. Curbing is definitely very much a no-go in the current build of the title. But that aside, um, I get to not set a lap, or at least I'm going to pretend I didn't set a lap so I don't have to actually embarrass myself any further than I already am. So let's jump onto the Porsche and see how much, if at all, it changes. All right, Porsche now. We've taken the engine, shoved it into the rear, and put a badge on it that I much personally prefer. Don't tell BMW. I'm, not a, I'm not, definitely not in the home of BMW currently. So... All right, cool. I've got to say, jumping from a front engine to a rear engine car, I'm actually getting the kind of difference I'd expect in handling, or, uh, sorry, in force feedback feel that I would get in ACC, so. Whoa, whoa, okay. All right, that's a slightly different sensation. It feels more nimble and agile so far. Well, let's see how we go with presumably cold tires. All right, slightly different on the brakes there. Oh, a bit more understeery on power. So it's definitely got that kind of rear engine element where you step on the throttle and the car begins to understeer out. So it immediately demands a different style of driving from you, which is fundamentally what you would expect from a physics model like this. 
So let's see as I briefly shut up and try and nail the braking point for once. All right, the downshift protection is a bit, wow, it's way more understeer than the BMW. So you don't actually get the snaps so much. You just get more of the car not wanting to turn in quite so hard. So let's see if I can actually do this flat out or, okay, we're good. Oh my God, okay. Whoa, you can definitely tell the center of gravity is in a different place. The car is just dancing around all over the place. But fundamentally, very, very exciting. Very, very fun stuff. And again, the most de detailed track model of Hockenheim I've ever driven in my life because it seems so much more 3D and undulant than I've ever experienced. Crazy, sharp, raspy sounds here with the Porsche as well. As I'll try and go in for one more lap, if you can call what I'm doing here actually lapping. Very rough around the edges. Oh my God, that curving, if you grab it on the exit, that's pretty much game over. Definitely curbing is something you need to avoid in the early build of this title. They, they might have some of the same sort of teething issues that we've uh, seen in some of the other sims, of course. Teething issues with my horrible driving aside. One thing we've noticed is the traction control is quite high on these cars, or at least it was on the BMW. Okay, so the curbs are quite brutal. You need to drive a lot more carefully than I do. But that kind of shows you the experiences that you might have if you go off track and uh, how generally unforgiving the title is in its current build. So a lot to be said about that as we go across the finish line for one last time. And that's our first impressions with Wrench Sport here. It's a really cool title, really ebbs with promise and potential. And even though maybe some of the ins and outs, such as like the curb handling on the limit or the outside curbs as you're under braking, may harken back at sims such as Project Cars 2 in a little way, I've no doubt that this is something that they can tweak out in time because the broad base of the physics model is actually very impressive and audio visually, I mean, what else do I need to say? It's uh, really, it's showing us a glimpse into the future of sim racing. So very cool that they invited me to this event and thank you for joining me for this first impressions. Ladies and gents, it's day two here at the Rennsport Summit uh, here at Munich. What do I say? It's I've met some of the coolest people in sim racing. I'm gonna try and move so you don't actually get the, the glare from the sun. How about this? Cool. So I've just been hanging out with Chris Hay, getting David Perel's life story about uh, how he funded his GT racing campaign until he became a pro. This has literally been a masterclass and just a really great place to basically convene for the first time with some of the nicest people in all of sim racing, which I'll quickly show you. So I've got to like ambush him. No, you're in the sun. You can't see Kim. And you can't see the mighty Chris Hay. Right, who? So this is, this is the first time on my channel you'll actually hear quality sage-like sim racing advice and not just like watch it twice talking about things that are way above his pay grade. And uh, massive thanks to Kim for actually sorting out some really nice uh, content creator rigs. He's the reason that you saw my horrible uh, talk and drive. And uh, quick hey to Mike from Sim Racing 604. Steve. Oh. 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 And Bran, been absolutely wonderful meeting you guys. So, yeah. It's day three of the Wrenchbot Summit, and as you probably hear by my voice, I'm a little bit worse for wear after a lot of partying and uh, yelling and all kinds of shenanigans last night. So, one thing I do want to say is that I've for the first time I've ever had a chance to meet some of the, the greatest personalities in sim racing. And I don't want to start naming all of them because there are way too many and I'll forget someone and hate myself. But it's amazing how lovely they all are. It's amazing how well we all get along and how any small differences in opinion we might have about sim racing all basically just evaporated in the light of how much more commonality we all have and how much easier it is to talk through those differences when you're there in person. There's not a screen in the way. But you may or may not care about that. What you may care about is the, the sim that's being presented here on the weekend. So to give you a rough outline of what we experienced, for me personally, 30 hours of flying, absolutely cactus. I land, they're like, all right, you get time for like a shower and like a little bite of food. And then we're taking you straight to the summit. We're gonna induct you into our ecosystem, show you what, what Wrenchport's all about, you know, give a talk, you can you know drive a little bit. And we did that, but on that first day, I was so tired. I had like two days, no sleep. I'm like, just take me back to the hotel, please. I need, I need to just pass out. So it was yesterday, Saturday, where the majority of the, the good stuff happened. There was a bunch of events uh, thrown together. The esports guys all got together. They basically did a race. I, I engaged in it. I was absolutely terrible. But thankfully to uh, Kim and the Fanatec crew, they set aside on the top level a uh, content creator rig for us to actually record our impressions for you guys. So that's what you saw earlier. And... I guess to segue into that, you know, what, what is this thing that we checked out here on the weekend? So they're very explicit at the start in saying that it's not an NFT scheme. Um, that's not how they intend to monetize this. 
Um, how they intend to do it, I, I still don't know, um, but they were explicitly against the notion that it involves anything like NFTs. But what they described ominously kind of sounded like NFTs, so I, I don't know, we've yet to see. Beyond that, however, and I think the more important thing in this case, beyond that platform, on top of that is actually a hardcore simulator. Like we have a new name coming to sim racing. It's a legit simulator. So from the moment you first drive, you're like, okay, all right, this is for real. This, this isn't some BS sim cade. It's not arcade. It's like another proper sim. So track model is insane. I've never seen Hockenheim rendered like that before. Very vertical and everything. Um, obviously in the talk and drive, I described all of that. There's a lot of potential there. And for me personally, what I played through is more promising than what I played through in early access, like the first early access release of ACC. So that may be saying a bit, it may not be, but yeah, my impressions are very, very positive. They've obviously outlaid a ton of money into this event, so they're serious. They're 110% in. I can't even imagine what all of this costs when we put it all together, just the, the logistical nightmare that it was. But if nothing else, I think they're showing us that they're here to stay. Um, I hope for better rather than for worse but we've yet to see. And before I waffle on for too long, guys, I am due to check out very shortly, so I just wanna have one last breakfast with some of the most amazing crew in sim racing, uh, which is gonna be absolutely lovely. So until the next time, which will hopefully be, well, hopefully soon for you guys, um, I get back from Europe in about two or so weeks from when you see this video, after which I'll see if I can do a recap on the summit based on new information that comes out. But for the time being, that's about all I have for you. So. I hope it was somewhat illuminating. Uh, it was certainly illuminating for me, the experience. So until the next time, I'll see you all later.